This video is all about speed ramps in DaVinci Resolve. Speed ramps are useful for adding impact or energy to footage. I'd like to add a speed ramp to this pour. The camera motion is nice, but it takes a while for the beverage to flow. I want the first portion of the clip to go quickly and then slow down. Let's open the retime controls. You can right click and find them in the context menu or on a Mac, you can hit Command R or on Windows, Control R. The drop down menu at the bottom allows you to change the speed of the entire clip. I only want to speed up the first part. To do that, create a speed point at the exact moment where the speed transition should happen. I will position the playhead and then open the drop down menu and select Add Speed Point. By the way, this video is sponsored by Audio. Get an entire year of royalty free music for your videos for only $60 with our link in the description. Now, there are separate speed controls either side of the speed point. You can add as many speed points as you'd like to a clip. Today, I only need one. Select the speed control for the first portion of the clip and I'll adjust its speed to 800%. Look at that giant gap I just created. That's because I made this change in selection mode. Let's undo it. This time, I'll switch over to trim edit mode. Now when I make that speed change, it automatically ripples the timeline. The operation has not left a gap. If you want to configure a speed that's not listed in the drop down menu, you can manipulate the speed by dragging the speed point left and right. Make sure you click and drag on the upper portion of the speed point. This is a nice intuitive way to manipulate the speed of your clip. And because I did this in trim edit mode, not selection mode, my timeline has rippled. No gaps have been created. No clips have been overwritten. Remember I said to click and drag on the upper portion of the speed point? Well, here's why. Clicking and dragging on the lower portion of the speed point, it does something different. It maintains the speed you selected, but slips the speed point left or right. This is great for adjusting the location of your speed transition. It's looking good, but it could definitely be better. That's because we haven't created a speed ramp yet. We've just created an instant speed change. For it to be a speed ramp, well, the speed needs to ramp. That is gradually change over time, not just abruptly. This is done by adjusting the retime curve in the keyframe editor. In version 20, the keyframe controls were relocated to their own separate panel in the top left-hand corner of the screen. By default, this panel opens in parameter view. We want curve view. I can already see the retime curve in the keyframe viewer. If your retime curve isn't visible, or perhaps you'd like to declutter the view, go to the parameters drop-down menu and filter the list so only retime speed is visible. Now that's much better. This line represents how the clip speed changes over time. The transition is very abrupt. It's like a sheer drop off the side of a cliff. The speed point is visualized with a single keyframe. Select it and click on the interpolation drop down menu. I'll choose ease in and ease out. Now that is a speed ramp. The visual change in the keyframe viewer makes it obvious what we've done. Now the retime speed changes with a nice smooth curve. These Bezier handles allow you to adjust how quickly it eases. I'd like the transition to happen very quickly. So let's do that and see the finished result. That looks great. In this instance, we constructed our speed ramp by speeding up our footage. We were able to do that because the footage was already shot in slow motion. Of course, you can use this technique to add faster portions on normal speed footage as well. What about creating a slow motion speed ramp on footage that has not been shot in slow motion? Before we continue, can we show you where we find music for our videos? Most library music websites feature filters that allow you to search by mood, genre, and instrumentation. Even then, it can still be hard finding the right music for your edit. Audio has two incredible AI assistants that can help. First, Hans AI. Simply describe your video or describe the type of music you're looking for, and Hans will suggest six tracks that might fit. Second, Link Match AI. If you've heard a song you like, provide Link Match with a link so it can listen. 
it will search audio's own royalty-free library and suggest similar tracks that you can actually use. We love it when AI is used to enhance your creativity rather than replace it. Audio has a ton of other features you'll love, but we think your favorite feature will be the incredible price. A big thank you to Audio for supporting our videos. In this example, I want to slow down a portion of this walking shot. Like before, I'll create a speed point where I want the speed change to occur. But instead of speeding up the latter half of this clip, I will slow it down all the way to 10%. When I play this back, you will see the problem. The latter half of the clip stutters because there's not enough frames in the source material for a smooth playback. We can fix this by changing the frame interpolation mode on this clip. Those settings are found in the inspector. By default, when making speed changes to a clip, Resolve uses an interpolation mode called Nearest. In this instance, because we've slowed the clip down by 10%, it needs to hold each frame for several frames in our final rendered video. That's why it appears to stutter. Optical Flow will analyze the motion in the scene and attempt to synthesize the extra frames required for smooth playback. The Motion Estimation dropdown allows you to select the algorithm used to make those calculations. If you have the Studio version of Resolve, the AI Speed Warp options will likely deliver the best quality. Let's take a look. You can see that's much better. This is a computationally intensive effect. It's likely that your computer won't be able to process this in real time. You might need to enable render caching. To learn more about that, please check out this video. And please note that optical flow will perform better on shots with predictable motion and clean textures. Some shots will look poor. This isn't a magic bullet. It's better to film at a higher frame rate when creating speed ramps. Now we've enabled optical flow. All that remains is to fine tune the speed ramp in the keyframe panel, just like before. I'll ease the transition to create a ramp. There's always more than one way to do something. If you don't like using the timeline retime controls, you can create your speed points in the keyframe editor and then use the cursor tool to change the retime speed by dragging the curve up or down. And of course, you can make your edit as complex as you want with multiple speed points in a single clip. Speed ramping is incredibly popular, especially when editing action, drone shots, or pack shots. A big thank you to Audio for sponsoring this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future DaVinci Resolve and filmmaking videos. See you next time.